Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makana Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. This one's going to be a bit uh, interesting, special. I wish to hone my airbrushing skills so I can do more interesting uh, patterns, freehand airbrushing, shading, uh, camouflage work across my um, Gundam kits and armor. I'm a bit disappointed while painting my tiny Type 95 that I didn't uh, airbrush it and I hand painted it due to not being good enough. Uh, what I've understand is um, the certain practice methods you can do on paper to improve and change that and I'm going to see where I stand at the moment. Please do not regard this as a tutorial or advice. Uh, I sometimes uh, do a little stenciling on clothing, uh, cosplay costumes and uh, lap gear of uh, symbols and whatnot. Came back from one of those uh, big workshops, uh, didn't clean it sufficiently and the state of this uh, Spa Max is disgusting. Yet it proves how good of an airbrush it is that a quick clean up and it will run absolutely beautifully example here. Now I've been tutored and instructed with any 0.3 mil branded airbrush you should be able to airbrush a line as thin as of that that's come out of a pencil or a pen. The best way to achieve this is to practice by doing straight line strokes. Now I haven't done that since I first learned airbrushing and they were very fat and shitty and whatnot. They were probably about uh, 10 to 15 mil fat so I'm going to get to lines that are smaller than um, 1 millimeter in diameter. Now straight away as one who gives advice and tutors other hobbyists in the manner of use of this tool I'm not using to its full potential just coloring things in and doing uh, very wide camouflage patterns and this is uh, the skill I'm demonstrating now which is an improvement from when I started is still an embarrassment over the um, how I have a master over this uh, tool in finishing of this hobby now at this point I have uh, stopped the work and uh, did a very quick flush out of uh, the airbrush. Thinned the paint more so it's of uh, the correct, very watery consistency. I'm known to painting quite thick from time to time in acrylic, so this is more so one part thinner to two part paint opposed to just a couple of drops. I've also disconnected my airbrush and uh, bled out the uh, water trap and any water that may be in the hose. Immediately in this uh, second round of um, spraying I have uh, gotten far superior results in the lines being a little neater, a little straighter and the airbrush not cutting out. Due to the basics uh, the water is uh, feeding through the hose and is interfering with uh, the paint uh, blocking it and clotting it. This sort of defeats the purpose of purchasing a fairly expensive rig and using a tank on the compressor, me not being able to use uh, the full continuous regulated PSI. What I've learnt is I'm not 100% utilising and fulfilling uh, all the functions of my current rig and with the complicated process that is atomizing uh, air pressure and uh, the correctly thinned amount of paint together to get that sweet spot of a constant fine stream of paint out of the needle and the nozzle as I've explained in the uh, theory that I've made before uh, not practicing what I'm preaching Fixing it, addressing it and seeing it on a very white piece of paper has uh, definitely awoken me and uh, made me realise that this is an amazing exercise to definitely improve your use of this tool. This also reinforces my theory and suggestion that if you're just doing basic colouring in or spraying, an expensive uh, sexy brand name such as Iwata is not exactly necessary for 
90% of aspects in this uh, hobby and that uh, this uh, brand, Spa Max, a very strong and worthy uh, workhorse can do even the absolute finest of uh, what the uh, best hobbyists in the world is capable of. As long as um, an airbrush you're able to uh, score parts for it uh, cheaply in your area, uh, they're always the one that you want to go out, purchase and use on uh, your very regular basis. At this stage I've uh, stopped for another break. I'm noticing even though the lines are a lot thinner, smaller and consistent, uh, my handling is uh, still very shaky, needs a lot of work and there's still a fine spluttering and not so much a fine uh, gradient which is uh, meaning the paint is being caught somewhere in the nozzle or the needle is ever so slightly bent. On further inspection by extracting the needle and cleaning it the very very tip was uh, bent uh, obviously from maintenance and normally uh, would be a throw out case but uh, these cheaper Chinese ones I've been getting has a very longer finer um, temper at the top and uh, merely hooking it with um, a sharp uh, fresh hobby knife and straightening it or breaking it off and just uh, working it to get an absolute perfect uh, point this has immediately improved the results tenfold and completely eliminated the very fine splattering which we'll look at uh, the overall review at the end of the video. Unfortunately as I started rushing these lines not being too uh, patient looking back right now editing this uh, video I do have a lot of uh, work in trying to do slower sleep, sweeps straighter lines and uh, addressing the weird tail end thing I've uh, been doing. Now the reason why I'm going to all this effort to uh, finer tune my airbrush besides being wanting to do very funky camouflage and freehand effects on my kit as I'm continuing to grow as a modeler and continuing to compete in the Gunpla Builders World Cup wanting to climb the ladder I need to have a better understanding and uh, masterful use of uh, all the regular tools and in the manner that a kit is finished before I let my imagination go wild. I cannot um, be expected to defeat the Australian champ and compete on the world's title if I do not uh, properly use my tools. On the other hand, if you're happy just colouring in your kits and just getting out of the box finishes, that is perfectly acceptable. This mission is only more so for the hobbyist that's pushing himself for uh, competition and uh, climbing the ranks. So let's have a look at uh, the work I've done. Uh, the pencil line in comparison. And we're getting nice and close and how ugly it is. We could see some bad spluttering. Some runs and lots and lots of gaps between the work which was not intentional that was the airbrush actually cutting out and uh, there are some bloody ugly lines though it does get it better and better but there's still splatter now I don't take the most good care of my airbrush and there's uh, some things that I'm lazy about that I don't um, check on because a model is not as harsh some of these things get hidden sometimes I do the right thing but uh, the first thing I checked excluding reviewing my own airbrushing technique was I emptied the water trap thinned the paint down even further lowered the PSI straightened the needle now this is after the airbrush is also perfectly cleaned mind you not ultrasonic clean but perfectly cleaned now let's look at the next page uh, don't mind uh, these splatters, that was just a little experiment. We get uh, nice and close, less splattering. Now as we get further on, the splattering stops, and this is bloody close. Paper, white paper is not forgiving. The line is a lot thinner, it is more consistent, it doesn't pull as much though it's still not as um, straight as I like it to be 
and um, I'm just letting go of the air before I let go of the paint which is a big no-no to the way of the uh, tailing though there is definitely a noticeable improvement and then uh, after two sheets this is my best effort and it's not too bad I still have a lot of practice to do I could probably afford to use a slightly nice airbrush this is my absolute uh, rubbish one and uh, compare it to a surface of a model kit you could do some cool things Straight after my airbrush practice, I went to spraying the doage uh, today, doing fine uh, snake-like brown lines on the zimmer of surfaces, and in other areas doing a Cold War MIG colour scheme effect of a green in the flat spots with a white outline, which a lot of fun to do and looks kind of cool. I want to do more of this sort of stuff and I'm continually uh, going to be practicing. In a few months time I'll do another uh, video to check uh, progress made and other observations. Thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, don't take this video too uh, seriously not a tutorial whatsoever just uh, something that I'm doing as a personal gesture to improve and should not be considered a standard within the hobby. It's all about fun and you have no reason to push uh, yourself that far only if you really want to.